everybody, how the hell are you today, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I am going to try to get through some things that have been bothering me that have to do with the publishing industry, and I'm thinking that a lot of it is my fault. So I don't necessarily know if this is going to be me eating crow or me trying to figure out a different way to make things happen. But like with all things, through my mistakes, I hope someone can learn something, if not me. Okay? So before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about some house cleaning shit. So, um, little updates on things that I've talked about on prior episodes. Um, if you remember a while ago, um, I can't remember what episode it was off the top of my head, but I read the poem, um, Glitter in My Wounds by C.A. Conrad. And when I was reading it, I even felt it was really stilted as I was reading it. I went and looked at it afterwards because when I was reading it on the show, I was reading it on my phone. I went to the website um, on Poetry Foundation later and looked at it again, and the structure of the poem was completely fucking different. And I read it out loud sitting there, and it read so much better when I was reading it on there. And then I pulled it up on my phone and did a side-by-side And my phone had it all fucked up all over the place. So this is one of those things where if you have a website where you post poetry, if the poetry is concrete in any way or just the shape of the poem is important to the poem, just make a screenshot of what it's supposed to look like and upload that. Because if you don't, the it's going to be all fucked up. And so people like me reading the poem on their phone, it like almost is unreadable with how weird the structure of the poem is. So I just wanted to talk about that. And then as a little added bonus to the episode um, I did about the Pen America penguin lawsuit against Florida kind of thing. Um, I don't know what school district it is or if it's a statewide ban, but Amanda Gorman, who did the um, poem at the inauguration of Joe Biden, um, her book has now been banned. Um, And I guess the poem she read at the um, inauguration is also banned. And I don't know if that poem is in the book. I would assume it would be, but that poem specifically is banned in the state of Florida. So the the flaccid penis of America comes through again doing something totally fucking stupid. Good job, Florida. If you haven't got it yet, make sure you go pick up me as an action figure, last month's chapbook, and this month's chapbook with me and Bunny Wild, Let Us Bleed. I have these like plastic sleeves to put them into. Um, in case anyone's worried about the sparkly grip tapey cover fucking up any of their other books. So, um, I'm actually gonna start putting it like, like poems about fucking in things like this. I might even put, I might just put all my chat books in these when I send them out just to keep them nice. I don't know if I'm going to tape them down, but Yeah. So there you go. So Let Us Bleed, it's out now at my Etsy shop. And if you go over to my YouTube page, I'm going to be doing a video in a little bit where I'm reading poems out of that. And keep your eye out for next month, the month of June, the official release of Winner Your Mom Sodomy Prize for Poetry. Pocket paperback edition. So let's let's get on with the fucking show. Let's, let's do the fucking show now. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Um, I don't, again, I don't know if I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read parts, whatever. But this popped up in my email box today. 
And um, it kind of set me off, but I don't know how to explain this to you. And I think I'm going to be working through this as we go. But this is from Lit Mag News. It's an, a new article by Christine Mall Rice, who is the founding editor of Hypertext, which will be brought up like 15 fucking times. So, I mean, good on her for promoting her shit. I'm not trying to be a dick. Why we charge submission fees. So that title right there, I was like, oh, I can't wait to fucking hear this. I can't fucking wait to hear this. Um, and then there were some things that were said that shined a light on me that like, I'm like, oh my God. And a lot of this has to do with also the conversation I had with Matthew Buckley Smith on a episode of Slee Ricketts that hasn't come out yet. Um, I don't know when you're listening to this, but as of the recording of this, that episode has not come out yet. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that we talked about on there, um, has a lot to do with some of the things that are going to be mentioned here. And I think I understand what the big problem is. And again, I think that problem's me. And I'll explain more as we go here. So, the article goes, There's been a lot of spirited discussion about submission fees lately. (coughs) Yes, there has. Even though Hypertext Magazine pays the writers, visual artists, and interviewers we publish, we understand why submission fees are controversial. Here's additional information about why many wholly independent journals like us charge a submission fee. So, it says, we've been publishing since 2010, and that translates into a boatload of content. I wish it said buttload. Um, It was getting too expensive to run the magazine on my own dime, and so in 2017, I structured Hypertext as a nonprofit. Okay, here's what I'd say about this. Why did it take you seven years to realize that it was getting too expensive? If in seven years of you doing something, and each year it's getting more and more expensive... What made you think the what you were doing was the right way to fucking do something? Do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, if it's like cost, like how much does it cost to do something? What are you getting back from that? The thing that trips me out is all of these magazines, they're not free. It's not like you can just like go, hey, can you send me a copy of Hypertext? And it'll be shipped to you for nothing. People have to pay for this. So if people are paying for this, why in the course of seven years are you getting so big, like as far as overhead goes, that the amount of magazines you're selling aren't offsetting the cost of your overhead. Like these are all educated people. I'm pretty sure all these people have fucking degrees and MFAs and some fucking thing. Like, did any of these people take fucking business classes? And in seven years go, you know what? After seven years of this fucking breaking my bank account, I think it's time to structure this as a nonprofit. Does that mean those seven years you were trying to make a profit and you were just unable to? And I'm not trying to be a dick here, but in any other line of work, even in the arts, if this is how this went, it took you seven years to realize that you weren't making any money, your ass would be fired in any other line of work. I know editors aren't necessarily in charge of marketing, but editors are in charge of the focus of their magazine and the scope that they're going to take over. If in seven years you couldn't figure out how to keep your magazine above water, three years. I would give someone three years to figure out how to keep their magazine above water. Seven years, you're like, shit, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Yes, yeah, I think it's time 
to to get that sweet sweet nonprofit status. I'm not trying to be a dick, but almost every person I know who runs a nonprofit group are fucking shysters as fuck. And they're all doing good things, but they're not. So this whole idea just like I know a lot of people like especially like hearing me talk about stuff they'll go wow this fucking capitalistic motherfucker it's not about being capitalistic it's about doing something in order to fucking survive because as we'll find out later even though like nonprofits are better when you hear where some of this money's coming from it's almost like worse okay so i'm gonna run a nonprofit, and satan is gonna give me a bunch of money to fucking run it because satan likes the arts Give me a fucking break, dude. Anyway, so at that time, we started charging a submission fee. We stopped during the pandemic and resumed in um, April of 21. In the early 2000s, a handful of wonderful Chicago literary arts organizations were, on average, operating on about $140,000 per year. That's fucking disgusting. I'm not trying to be a dick here, but if, like... You are a nonprofit, and just your donations from deep pocketed contributors are giving you $140,000 a year. Fucking hell, dude. If any of you motherfuckers who have $140,000 sitting around want to fucking have something that's fucking killer, let me fucking know, dude. I guarantee my overhead will be smaller than any motherfucker's overhead. Jesus fucking Christ. By 2018, all these nonprofits lost foundation funding and soon after closed. Funding shifts. One year literary nonprofits are in vogue. The next year they're not. Sadly, it's been a long dry spell of not being in vogue. The fucking idea that you're basing your fucking model to have a fucking magazine, a literary journal, on... If it's in vogue to support the arts through wealthy backers, this is making me fucking ill. This is disgusting. And the fact that she is so nonchalant about how she's talking about this is fucking disgusting. Oh my fucking God. No wonder why people fucking hate us, dude. Jesus Christ. Some so-called publishers take advantage of writers and operate in bad faith. Okay, I almost called you a bad name there. You were getting $140,000 to run a failing magazine? You want to fucking talk about bad faith, dude. <sighs> okay, I don't know you. I don't know how your thing works. Okay, most do not. I, founder and editor of Hypertext, have never been paid. Well, that's good. Because you obviously don't deserve it if, like, your magazine has been fucking, like, almost broke ever since its inception. Our managing editors are paid a nominal annual stipend that embarrassingly doesn't cover one month of groceries. Okay, so you're making people work slave fucking wages. You're not getting any money at all, in air quotes. Um, I think your managing editors... Um, need to start their own fucking magazine because I feel like you're taking advantage of them. Okay. And this is just coming from me. So, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, but I like the fact that you know, that's and mm. that it's embarrassing and that, um, it doesn't even cover one month of groceries. Okay. So last fiscal year, what we earned from submission fees was less than half the cost to produce one print slash digital issue. Just so you know, it shouldn't really cost you anything to produce a digital issue. Unless, of course, like you're going to say, here's the next thing. For each issue, our expenses include paying 30 to 40 contributors, a copy editor, a typesetter, a visual artist, and a graphic artist, printing and hosting slash security. Okay, first off, the hosting slash security, that's silly. And there should not have to be any kind of security if you had a decent fucking thing. 
a decent site. And, like, when GoDaddy and those motherfuckers are like, oh, well, you, you... Like, I know you've been paying for this for all these years, but now you also need security, you know, because maybe we'll let your shit slip. That's a bunch of bullshit. That's an argument for a different day. But here's the deal. If you have a magazine that is not making any money at all and you're hiring 40 contributors plus a copy editor, visual artist, graphic artist, printing, all this other shit, and a typesetter, it, it, is it 1860? What the fuck? Like, maybe I'm just fucking stupid. What the fuck do you need a typesetter for? Like, are you printing this on a fucking, like, old ass, like, printing press? Like, what's happening here? Jesus Christ, there's a little thing called a word processor. It came out about 40 fucking years ago. Look it up. If you are hiring that many people to do work and you're not making enough money to fucking live, you're doing this wrong. The fact that... the Okay, the fact that you can charge submission fees and have at least half of the amount of money to pay all of those people that you just talked about, that's shocking. That's shocking. Unfucking believable, dude. Like, this whole, like, bad faith, the fact that this is legitimized and accepted is fucking disgusting, and you're fucking talking about acting in bad faith, dude. Oh my god. Part of the problem is the nonprofit model. No fucking shit. We agree on something. Nonprofits are required to have a board of directors, and usually boards of directors raise boatloads of cash. Just say buttload, you know you want to. But small arts nonprofits have trouble attracting wealthy and influential bigwigs, people who know where and how to get money to serve on the boards. Here's the very outdated model. Board members, through their connections, bring individual donations and foundation grant money into nonprofit organizations. But bigwigs aren't drawn to serve on small arts nonprofits. Why? Bigwigs want to serve on high impact boards with other bigwigs, have big wig lunches, advance their big wig careers. They could make a significant impact on the bottom line of small arts organizations, but they often don't. You sound so fucking entitled, I don't even know what to fucking do. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, you have obviously shown that you couldn't manage a pair of pants, let alone a fucking magazine. Why the fuck would anyone give you boatloads of cash to run your failing fucking operation. Just because it's art doesn't mean that it shouldn't fucking grow. This, the mentality, the mentality of academic poetry, I don't understand. Support the arts. We will if you will fucking manage it properly. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so basically, the where I have fucked up my whole life when it comes to being a publisher is that I'm not a nonprofit, I don't have a board of directors, and the board of directors' whole job is to raise buttloads of cash by... Attracting wealthy and influential bigwigs. Yes. But how dare them want to advance their careers and have big wig lunches? This is fucking disgusting. And send me an email. I hate Matwall, gmail com. If you think I'm out of line right here. This is fucking gross. If our government was fucking bitching like this, which they are, you know how many people would be throwing their hands up? Which they are. Am I right? Come on, guys. Fuck me, dude. Independent, independent nonprofit literary journals rely on a combination of individual donations, subscriptions, foundation government grants, and fundraising events. Stop right there. You know what your literary journal should be? 
be bringing money in from? Subscriptions and ad revenue. Now, if you don't have a single ad in your magazine and that's how it is, it should be like that because you got to a point where you didn't need ads anymore. That you have a subscription base so high that you don't have to charge for ads anymore. Instead of fucking putting it on the people who work for you, putting it on the people who are submitting work anyway, and putting it on the fucking people who buy these magazines, because I'm assuming these magazines are as expensive as a fucking magazine could get. Because, again, it's supporting the arts. That's fucking bullshit. That is fucking, like, extortion, dude. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Since the pandemic, fundraising events and individual donations have yielded little. But they have yielded, which is sick. This puts us, like most nonprofit literary journals, at risk of closure. Okay, so again, for seven years, you tried to make money on this and figured you couldn't. So the only way you could keep this fucking charade going is by taking nonprofit status. It's fucking disgusting. Uh, in the United States, literary journals are often the first to go when institutions cut budgets. That's where my ire flows. Oh, she's pissed, guys. Not at vulnerable literary publications. Not at vulnerable literary publications charging a nominal fee. Dude. <laughs> the next fucking editor who talks about nominal as a fee needs to fucking take a long walk off a short pier wearing concrete fucking sneakers. This is fucking bullshit. Okay. She's basically running a failing business off of motherfuckers giving her handouts. And now she's telling you, this is a nominal fee. Just fucking do it, you asshole. <sighs> Fearing every issue might be their last. It's fucking Darwinianism. You don't know what you're doing, so fucking stop. Here's a partial list of lit journals, university and indie publications that have recently closed or are on shaking ground. Let's look. Okay. Ooh, Catapult. Funded by a daughter of one of the Koch brothers. Hey, guess what? That money is as dirty as any fucking thing in the goddamn world. What the fuck is that? Oh, the Believer. This sells sex toys. They're probably doing better selling sex toys. So let them fucking be. Um, Alaska Quarterly. Um, the Antioch Review. Um, I'm not going to read all this stuff. There's just a lot of them. Um, some journals like UK's uh, Granta have wealthy and influential benefactors. Ooh, According to Glassdoor, a Granta publication assistant editor makes about 50000 a year annually. I wonder how they do that. I couldn't find their annual budget, but they have a robust masthead. This is ideal. If I were a wealthy philanthropist, which you will never be because you don't know how to fucking make money, I would do my civic duty by throwing a few hundred grand at the literary journal of my choice. You're a fucking saint. You are a fucking saint. I mean, editors absolutely deserve to be paid for their expertise. This is her begging for money, because, again, she has never been paid for this. Most literary journals would welcome a genuine benefactor's support. I know Hypertext would. Hey, what magazine do you work for again and you're an editor of? Oh, okay, Hi Hypertext, that's great. Um, Yeah, everyone wants fucking money. But you know what you do when things aren't working? You figure out what's wrong and you try to fix it. You don't just continue or even get bigger, making bigger mistakes. I just don't know why no one's helping the arts. I don't know why nobody wants this giant fucking overhead of this fucking magazine that I have. And uh, I'm just charging nominal fees for writers. This is fucking bullshit. 
The consistent grind of writing time-consuming grants is difficult. It is. What a bitch that must be. And most grants literary journals are eligible to receive do not exceed $5,000, and it's often less. Oh my god, just take the free money. Ugh. Grants take, on average, 30-ish hours to write. Oh, this poor, poor woman fucking cramping her hands and everything. If we write 10 grants and receive all 10, we would get $50,000. But we usually get one grant for every 10 we write. Oh my God. And writing grants fall on top of a myriad of other duties required to run a small arts nonprofit and our day jobs. Shucks, golly gee. If this is the business model you are dealing with, that's your fucking job. Why is it a writer's responsibility to take care of how you run your shitty fucking business? Idiot. Here's another reason why we charge a nominal submission fee. Funders often ask about our revenue streams. I bet they do. What are your revenue streams? We actually don't got none. Um, how much revenue do your revenue streams pull in? I get it. They want to know if the business model is sustainable. Oh my God. She knows exactly what's happening. As you can imagine, our revenue streams are anemic and our business model is not sustainable. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, is she one of the Trump lawyers? Like what's happening here? Like you're, you're giving away all the shit here. Um, all content, including interviews and special features, is free online. Well, you probably need to chart change that. If we charge readers to access our online journal, how many people would pay? Not many. Probably because you don't know how to fucking market anything. Um, we charge $5 to submit. We charge $15 per print journal. Wow, 15 bucks, huh? We have a Substack subscription for $60 per year wherein each subscriber receives our biannual journals and add a girl for supporting independent publishing. Oh my God. Okay, so let me get this straight. This, 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 this journal that you put together only comes out twice a year? And it's $15 an issue, but all the information in the magazine is free online? Oh my god. But fuck, if I get an Atta Girl, you know, fuck. Dude, oh my god. Look, this might be like people getting really fucking mad at me. And this girl might get really fucking mad at me. And I just said girl because I was just reading an Atta Girl. Sorry person okay here's the deal this might be some tough love kind of shit you don't know what the fuck you're doing so either do it right or don't do it at all because this what you did right here all this has shown is that you don't know what the fuck you are doing and you've been doing it for a long time and usually people who are doing something for a long time get better at it or figure out a way to make it work if you are getting worse at it because i'm assuming that each year that goes on your expenses go up but your in the profit is coming down so if that's the case you really have no fucking idea what you're doing so maybe you shouldn't be doing this i would be really curious to find out what you do for your day job because something tells me it has nothing to do with money whatsoever on the other hand, we have many expenses. Obviously, here are a few. Even with the clamp discount, we pay uh, 290 annually for submittable services. In 2021, we paid 184 for submittable. To be clear, submittable is an incredibly valuable resource. It would be very difficult to duplicate submittable's back end and reliability. Or you just don't use submittable. In 2010, we paid $38 for website hosting. In 2023, we've already paid $419. Um, I'm going to guess a lot of that has to do with securities. That's a scam, just so you guys know. 
Um, in 2010, we paid nothing for plugins, digital functionality, security, pay gateways. Every little digital thing has been monetized. In 2023, we've already paid over $400. Okay, well, if you are not making enough money to sustain that kind of shit, why don't you not do that kind of shit? Figure out an alternative. The bulk of our annual budget goes towards paying over 60 to 80 contributors, any interviewers, a typesetter. Dude, I'm sorry. I did not know the typesetters were still like something that happened. Um, good Lord. Do you pay the cobbler to make your shoes too? A visual artist for spot illustrations. Okay. Um, I asked our managing and fiction editor, Chelsea Lane Wells. Everyone has three names. I feel like I'm screwing the pooch by not having three names about what she noticed since we began charging a submission fee and she told me this oh god straight from the horse's mouth are you ready let's see what she has to say certainly our preference would be to offer our completely barrier free experience with no submission fees but submission fees are a necessary evil in terms of publication costs and other expenditures however as fiction editor i noticed as my readers noticed a marked increase in quality and adherence to our standards once the submission fees were introduced. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, Chelsea. This is bullshit, and I'll tell you why. This means that before you charge submission fees, you didn't know how to do your fucking job. That you didn't know how to separate the good shit from the bad shit. You're telling me that because you did not charge a submission fee, good writers weren't submitting to you. But then once they noticed that you were charging a submission fee, they were like, ah, I see. I'm going to start this now. That is a bold faced lie. I'm also curious to see how many writers were in the magazine before you charge submission fees. And if they're still in afterwards, because now you're saying that their work before that wasn't any good. Do you see the slippery slope you're on here? And all of this comes back to you as the person who chose those bad stories in the first place. So if you choose bad stories, that makes you a bad editor. So why are you blaming it on people paying a fucking submission fee? Oh, and my readers noticed. I bet they did. I mean, you guys have tons of readers. That's why you guys aren't hurting for cash or... Oh, shit. Wait. Nope. You're right. Okay. Sorry. As a writer myself, I feel this is because a submission fee naturally brings out a more intentional submission process. Bullshit. Recently, when I had a piece of my own that I wanted to submit, I carefully researched publications that were appropriate for the piece and had a strong track record for high quality publications. That has nothing to do with if they're charging for fees or not. Because by this standard, then this magazine, Hypertext, is a cut above the New Yorker and poetry. Right? Because they don't they, they don't charge, but you charge. So you're better. Okay, that's bullshit. The literary magazine that I selected had a submission fee that I did not mind paying because it was clear that it was the right magazine for the piece and that they were doing good work. Okay, my question is, is that the only place you submitted to? Because if that is the only place you submitted to, then your piece must have been amazing because you submitted to one place, paid the fee, and it got in. That's brilliant. You are amazing. But you also are a, you're an editor who barely makes any money, who could barely pay for your yearly groceries working for the magazine you work for, and you don't have a problem paying submission fees. So you obviously also do not understand the value of a dollar. So um, this kind of thoughtful submission that Hypertext wants and that we have seen since the submission fee was introduced. This is all... Chelsea, I don't know you, but everything you said here is absolute bullshit. And you cannot actually prove any of this stuff. That's garbage. Oh, my fucking God. 
Nonfiction editor Anita Gill added this note to me. I agree with Chelsea that the quality of submissions has improved once standard submission fee was put in place. As a writer myself, I look at submission fees as my way of supporting literary organizations. It goes without saying that my literature and the arts are the programs that suffer the most in times of crisis, yet they are also the most necessary. Oh, oh my God. How can people fucking lie so... F okay. Oh, this is this is garbage. Um, okay. So again, you're saying that quality is based on if a writer has money to give you a magazine that cannot make money to save its life. But hey, you got an ad, a girl. So just fucking deal with that. Literary journals are often the first place writers find a home for their work. That's bullshit. That might have been true like 50 fucking years ago. Most people find a home for their work wherever the fuck they post it, wherever the fuck they print it out and stick it. You are unnecessary. There is no need for you. Literary journals are often the first place writers find a home for their work. At Hypertext, 94% of what we publish comes from our slush pile. We solicit poetry. In 2021, we published 59 contributors from a variety of backgrounds. Five were first-time published writers. Good job. You, whatever. As a, oh, fuck me, dude. This is just, okay. To champion unknown and emerging writers, our editors log in countless hours of reading submissions and working with writers. and Who fucking cares? Oh. Since 2017, six of Hypertext nonfiction contributors have earned notable nods from the best American essay editors. A first-time published writer was recently recognized by Penn slash Robert R. Du Prize for Emerging Writers. Wow. So does that mean the work they gave you was recently recognized? And so you put out almost 100 people a year. So since 2017... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So in six years, that's like 600 people. So for every 100 people you put out, one of them gets a notable nod. Uh, that's, that's some good fucking numbers right there. We are committed to all these efforts. Yes, it's a struggle to stay afloat with very little money coming in because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Oh, my God. And if you have that many fucking people in your magazine, and a lot of them are known and you still can't fucking sell it is that them or is that you we understand that some writers will refuse to pay submission fee nonetheless we hope that being transparent about why we charge a fee and how we use the money will put writers at ease we encourage other publishers to who charge submission fees to do the same here's what i encourage everyone out there do not submit to these people because they have no idea how to fucking do anything with your work all that this showed, the transparency, was that they are entitled and they want you or anyone with a lot of money to give them money so they can continue to fail. Just because you're in the arts doesn't mean you have to run a business like a fucking douchebag idiot. There are ways to fucking do things. What you have done obviously doesn't work. Cut your fucking overhead and do what you can to make some fucking money so people will look at you as a good investment. Even even though it's like not them earning money off of you. Donating to people who know what the fuck they're doing matters. Nobody wants to fucking donate to a fucking magazine that gets a hundred people in it a year and can't sell enough copies for a loaf of bread. You put out two magazines a year Jesus fucking Christ. Our mission is to publish lit journals online and in print. You need to stop that, obviously. We at Hypertext would love to find a better way forward than charging submission fees. And at, last, at our last editorial meeting, discuss the options for those who simply can't afford them to enact in fall 2023. But until then, our nominal, nominal, nominal submission fee is the price we charge to support the important service we provide that you already said doesn't fucking do enough to fucking do anything. Jesus fucking Christ. Publishing the work of writers we cherish but whom the commercial marketplace doesn't always support. Don't act like you're doing anyone any fucking favors here. 
This is fucking disgusting. I'm done. Fuck this, dude. I, I don't know what else to say, guys. Like, I have not looked at publishing as a nonprofit. I just never have because it didn't seem like, I don't know. It didn't seem like something that I needed to do. You know, but maybe that's where I fucked up. I'm coming with this whole fucking attitude of hustling and doing your fucking thing and making sure everybody fucking knows about it. But maybe the problem is, is that I'm not sucking up to rich motherfuckers and having them be my benefactor. Maybe that's where I fucked up. Maybe that's what I need to fucking do. Yeah. Maybe I need to take dirty fucking money from fucking greedy fucking individuals to support the arts. Unfucking believable. I cannot believe the amount of people that magazine fucking pays. And then because there's so many of them, none of them are actually making enough money to fucking do anything. And they, they're not even making enough money to make the fucking magazine good. And then they put everything on the website for free anyway. Why is anyone going to buy your fucking stupid magazine? Jesus Christ, pick one or the other. Well, no one's going to just buy the magazine, will they? If you're a fucking magazine, yes. That is your sole fucking purpose. Jesus fucking Christ. Idiots. I'm fucking done, dude. I'm fucking mad now. Okay, so let me show you how to fucking do this. In case you don't fucking understand this. Let us bleed. Split chat book with me and Bunny Wild. It's available at my Etsy shop. The link's down below. You're going to fucking love it. Hey, also pick up me as an action figure. Another great chat book of poetry. And on my site right now, on my Etsy shop, a ton of my chat books are on sale for $5 until the end of the month. That's shocking. Next month, that we will see the wide release of winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. How fucking hard was that? Idiots. Type hard people who fucking want to type hard, fucking suck corporate dick, try to fucking get nonprofit fucking money fucking given to you for you doing a bad job at doing the fucking one thing that you pretend you know how to do. I'm fucking done. This is fucking bullshit. I will talk to you all later. Bam. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.